Analog Way, pioneer in analog, leader in digital. Welcome to the Pulse training video. Pulse is a dual scalar, high resolution mixer seamless switcher for large screen projections, conference rooms, and houses of worship. Pulse is a powerful dual scalar seamless switcher featuring numerous live effects such as cut, fade, keying, logo insertion, and PIP possibilities. It features up to 10 inputs, which can handle SDTV, ED and HDTV, computer resolutions up to 2K, and SD, HD, and 3G SDI connections. It features six universal analog inputs, two digital DVI inputs, and two SD, HD, or 3G SDI inputs. It has RS-232 and LAN connections for external control, and the preview and main outputs are available over DVI and VGA simultaneously. The Pulse features 3G SDI, full digital processing, and HDCP on-off capabilities. Please note the following video menu close-ups reveal a periodic scan due to the non-synchronization between the camcorder and the Pulse's VFD display. This is not visible during normal use. How to clear any previous settings. To begin, you may wish to clear any settings entered by a previous operator. Press the menu button to enter the menu and use the control knob to scroll down to the control menu. Scroll down in the control menu and select Erase Memories. Press Yes to confirm and all image memory information will be erased. Next, Select Menu again, and scroll down to the Control menu. At the bottom of the Control menu, you'll find Default Values. Select Default Values and Yes to Confirm to perform a factory reset. Once the progress bar is complete, the unit will reboot, and you are now ready to begin. How to adjust the output resolution. The first thing you may wish to do is adjust the output resolution. Press Menu and navigate to Main Out or Preview Out. Select Output Format and choose the resolution you'd like to use. Today we'll be using 1900 by 1200. Select Internal Reference and then choose the frame rate. Press Enter, and your resolution will be selected. How to enable a test pattern. To enable a test pattern, press Menu and scroll down to Main Out. At the bottom of the Output menu, you will find Test Patterns. Enter the Test Pattern menu, and choose a test pattern, such as grid. Press Enter to choose the grid test pattern, and when you are done, press Off to turn it off. How to configure your inputs. To configure the inputs automatically, press Menu and enter the Input menu. Select the Auto Set All function, and the device will automatically scan all inputs for the available signal type. This process takes a few seconds. To manually configure an input, scroll down to the input number would you wish to configure and select Input Type. Here you can choose which input type to use. For example, if you are using a computer, select Computer HV. Or, if you'd like to auto-set one input individually, select the input number and choose the auto-set function. This will auto-set just this input.
the layer system. The Pulse has an intuitive layer system which features four layers, background frame and logo, and display still stores. Background live and PIP layers are used to display live video sources. The background frame layer is the bottom layer. On top of this, the background live and PIP layers, and on top of this, the logo layer. To see a layer beneath, make sure you have cleared or moved aside the layers above. How to display a source. How to select an input. First, select the layer you wish to adjust, such as Background Live. Then, select the source. Press Take to transition your source to the main program screen. Let's see that again. Press Background Live, press Input 1, and your source will appear on the preview. Press Take to cleanly transition it to main. How to switch sources. First, select the layer you wish to change, then select a new source. You'll see the new source on preview. Press Take to transition your new source to the main. How to display a PIP. First, select the PIP layer. Then, select a source you wish to see in the PIP. Press Take to transition the PIP to the main screen. Let's see that again. Press the PIP layer, then press the source you wish to add, and press the Take button. Your PIP will appear on the main program screen. You can tell that the PIP is in use because it will be in red. How to reposition or resize the layer. First, select the layer you wish to edit. You will see the Layer menu appear. Select Layer Adjust, and you will find all the parameters for the position and size of the layer. Make some adjustments, and press Enter to confirm your changes. When you are finished, Press the Take button to see your changes appear on the main program screen. How to clear a layer. To clear a layer, select the layer. You will see it begin to blink. Press black and then take. Your layer will be cleared from the main screen. To see your other layer appear on preview, select a new layer. How to display a logo or a frame. In Analog Waves vocabulary, a frame is a full screen capture. A logo is a small partial screen capture. To capture a logo or a frame, press Menu and scroll down to Logo and Frame in the menu. Select Record Frame and choose an empty slot and press Enter. The device will now capture the contents of your main program screen to the frame slot. How to display a previously captured frame. To display a previously captured frame, first select the background frame layer, then choose the number corresponding to the frame slot where you saved your frame. You will see the frame appear on your preview. Press Take to have the frame appear on the main. Please note that video layers will block your view, so be sure to clear these layers before displaying a frame. How to set up your transparent background. Press Menu and scroll down to Control. Press Enter and scroll down to Dynamic Fit. When Dynamic Fit is selected, you'll see the transparent background is also selected. 
Let's see that again. In the control menu, when dynamic fit is selected and transparent background follows the selection, you will see that black that would be normally generated by the pulse is rendered as transparency. This allows you to see layers beneath, such as the background frame. How to set up side-by-side -side PIPs. To set up side-by-side -side PIPs, you can select two layers next to each other. Use the layer adjustments to resize and position the layers so that they are side-by-side. -side. Depending on your choice of aspect ratio settings, you can have the layers appear centered in the window, full screen, or cropped. By using the transparent background feature, you can also see the background frame behind. How to set up the aspect ratio. To set up the aspect ratio, navigate in the menu to Image. In the Image menu, select Aspect Out. You now have a choice of centered, cropped, full screen, or one-to-one. -one. This chooses how the source is displayed in the layer. By default, the Aspect Out setting is centered. This will display your source as large as possible inside the available window, but not disturbing the aspect ratio. You could choose Cropped to display the source as big as possible with the correct aspect ratio, but cropping the remaining portions of the video signal. Or you can display it full screen, where the source will be stretched to fit the available layer. How to set up a chroma or luma key. To set up a chroma or luma key, you will need to use two layers. The background live layer will contain the source underneath, and the PIP layer will contain the source above, usually your text. After configuring the chroma and luma key settings, you will be able to select the PIP layer, revealing only your text. You can also resize and position the, the PIP layer so that it appears exactly how you need it. How to save a preset. To save a preset, press Menu and navigate down to Preset. In the Presets menu, select Save Preset, and you can choose to save your preset from the main or the preview screen, and which memory slot to save it in. Press Yes to confirm, and your preset will be saved. To recall a preset, press the Preset button on the front panel. Then select the number corresponding to the preset slot where you saved. For more details, or if you have further questions, see our user's manual, or our website, or contact our technical support department.